Well, let me just read this and then we'll do the uh, UAW strike um, video because this is apropos of the um, the interview we did with Wrecked over vacation, which if you did not listen to it about this book, about the demise of the U.S. car uh, industry and it uh, their demise as a function of their attempting to diminish worker power. Just I want to read from this Reuters report. It's talking about um, some 50,000, almost 50,000 U.S. hourly workers at GM, represented by the UAW, went on strike uh, not last night, but the night before. And uh, there were reports that uh, GM knew this was coming, so they were stashing essentially their high-margin vehicles all around the country. They had a lot of inventory preparing for this. And in that <clears throat> that book, Wrecked, they talked about how the the entire supply chain for GM and, and Ford and, and Chrysler at the time was uh, changed so that it would not rely or did not empower workers to go on strike very easily. And if you stockpile inventory, you stockpile parts, you stockpile, et cetera, et cetera, you are less subjected to the power of the labor. And uh, much of this is about GM hiring temporary workers. I believe they're called scabs. Well, no, no, no. This Scabs would be people who are crossing a picket line. But I'm talking about in the course of their doing business. Um. There are uh, workers who are full-time workers working across the conveyor belt or whatever it is, the, um, who are doing the exact same thing they're doing, except for they are there as temporary workers so that GM can pay them less, provide them less benefits, diminish the power of labor, right? Because if you have somebody there who's temporary in terms of status, they, the, the cost of them involved in any type of labor action is less. And this Reuters says U.S. Automaker, uh, automakers use temporary employees who are paid less and receive uh, fewer benefits to be more cost competitive versus their Asian and European counterparts with non-unionized plants in the U.S. South. And um, the fact is, I, I just don't believe this. I mean, just based upon that, uh, that book that I think part of it is they want to also diminish the power of the full-time workers, the non-temporary workers, and their ability also to increase their wages. So this isn't just a question of we save money on the temporary workers. It is we use the temporary workers to undercut the power of all our workers. Yeah, that's interesting because another thing that they're mad about is um, a two-tier contract. So workers who are not temporary are still paid less than the senior workers who might even do the exact same job. And this is a, a kind of contract that is obviously terrible for worker solidarity. And it's one that the union accepted. Indeed. Um, now, one of the other issues for these workers is that back in 2009, um, the unions really took a hit in helping salvage this company, particularly GM, but others. Um, they allowed for lapsed payments in retirement funds and in healthcare funds, um, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, here is a, um, a clip of uh, some workers uh, speaking out on CNN. What is it that you all want? Hey, how you doing? Hey, great to see you. What, what do you want? Can you encapsulate it in a couple of sentences of why you're striking? Uh, yeah, just improvements on wages, health care benefits, and profit sharing across the board. A lot of things that we sacrificed back during the recession in 2007, 2008, we want to be compensated for it now as the company is making record-breaking profits. And so, Ray, you also, as I understand it, are a single dad. And so what time did you show yes. up? What time did you have to show up today to strike? Um, 6 a.m. 
Okay. And so tell me the effect that this is having on your home and your life. Um, well, being a father, the health care benefits are tremendously important, and trying to survive off of a reduced income is very difficult. So going back to work and with a fair wage is very important for all of us, you know, company-wide. As we understand it, this is just this morning, there are still dozens of sticking points. Well, how does that make you both feel? Yeah. Um, for me personally, I understand the, the difficulty of, of the negotiations and the importance of them. So this being a lengthy strike, I'm fine with that being the case as long as everything is ironed out and it's fair for everyone. Because I understand the position of the company as well, trying to go forward and being profitable and being on the cutting edge of new technology and being the leader across the board with uh, the auto industry. But also on the backside of that, the, the workers who sacrifice for the company to get ahead today and be profitable as it is today, we want to be compensated as well because we took a major sacrifice over the years. I mean, they have. Uh, they've taken a massive and they uh, consider sacrifice. the company's well-being. Indeed. <laughs> Even as the company screws them, them out over in every way. Yes. Yeah. Well, they still need the company for jobs. Yes. Of course. But it's a mentality difference that's the, quite striking. Well, like car. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, I've because of uh, of my um, my in-laws, former in-laws uh, and their families. Um, I knew quite a few of those folks who had worked for. Uh, Ford and GM and this and that and the pride that they take in their work is pretty uh, intense in that uh, it's not um, I think folks work with you know in in constructing things like that uh, that tends to be a very high level of pride that you don't see necessarily and when you go into like I work for an accounting firm or something like that yeah they're making things it's productive it's literally productive labor um and they so, did a hard picket, by the way. Like you saw some people walking around in the background of that video, just doing what you might normally think of as a picket line. But they also did a hard picket where they physically blocked people from getting into the building, which is how picket lines started. And I think that's pretty cool. We haven't seen that in a while. Um, I have a feeling we're going to see more of it as we go.